uh, a response of Jesus in Mark's gospel. One day he was asked, and this, this will be the theme verse for the series. One day he was asked, what's the most important command? And Mark 12, 29 and 30 records his response. The most important commandment is this. You must love the Lord your God with all your soul. That's the spiritual aspect, the holy aspect we'll be looking at today. And all your mind, that's the mental, and all your strength, that's the physical. Well, let's talk about our spiritual health today. I want us to look at 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 15 and 16. As obedient children, let yourselves be pulled into a way of life shaped by God's life a life energetic, energetic and blazing with holiness, God said, I am holy, you be holy. Now, before we talk about what holiness looks like, I want to make sure we understand what sin looks like, okay? Let, let's make a contrast here. Let me, let me tell you three things about sin. Let me expose some things about sin. First of all, sin is deceptive. It never reveals its true self. It masquerades as something very pleasurable, okay? On the front end, sin's a lot of fun. Otherwise, people wouldn't be doing it, right? Yes. But then, sin is also destructive. And we need, to, we need to understand this about sin. The Bible says that the wages of sin is what, church? It's death. It will absolutely destroy us. So how can I possibly live a holy life in such an unholy culture? First of all, let me suggest that we commit ourselves to God's standards. Let's commit ourselves to God's standards. That's the starting point. You see, too often we live by the standards of the world instead of the word. Somebody say amen. The psalmist tells us how we can live a holy life. Psalm 119, how can a young person stay on the path of purity? By living according to God's word. He says, I seek you, God, with all of my heart. Do not let me stray from your commands. I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. Have you noticed that the world's standards are different than the word's standards. Second, guard your heart. I'm liable to preach, you know, I usually preach a short message. I'm liable to preach a long time on this medicine I'm on. Number two, guard, you're nervous now. Guard your heart, guard your heart. Proverbs four, guard your heart above all else for it determines the course of your life. Avoid all perverse talk, stay away from corrupt speech. Are you listening to this? Look straight ahead and fix your eyes on what lies before you. Mark out a straight path for your feet. Stay on the safe path. Don't get sidetracked. Keep your feet from following evil. That's how you live a holy life. I, I like the first part of that. Guard your heart. Guard your heart. Why? Because that's where sin is birthed. Number three. <laughs> I'm going to buy your dinner, bro. Number three, to live a holy life, we've got to learn to say no. No. Say no to the devil. You don't have to give in to temptation. Do you understand that you've got a choice? You have a choice in this matter. The more you say no to the devil, the easier it is to say yes to Jesus. The easier it is. Don't, hey, don't you ever say maybe. Don't you ever say maybe to the devil. Don't, the Bible says don't give him a foothold, right? <laughs> Titus 2.11 says, For the grace of God has appeared that offers salvation to all people. It teaches us to say no to ungodliness and world passions and to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in this present age. We can live a holy life. Number four, let God pour his spirit into your life. If you want to live a holy life, you're going to need the spirit of God all over you. You're going to need the Spirit of God in you. Ephesians 5, 18 simply says, be filled with the Spirit. Now, here's the dilemma. To be filled with the Spirit, listen to me, 
We've got to make room for the Spirit. Finally, you thought I'd never say that, didn't you? <laughs> Finally, to live a holy life, we've got to experience God's sanctifying grace. 1 Thessalonians 4, verse 3 says, It is God's will that you should be sanctified, that you should avoid sexual immorality, that each of you should learn to control your own body in a way that is holy and honorable, not in passionate lust like the pagans who do not know God. For God did not call us to be impure, but to live what? That's what you've been called to do. That's what I've been called to do. Why be holy? Because that's what God asks of us. Thank you.